time for another ranking uh, movie video. I've done a number from the 80s and a quite a few from the 50s. I'm going to try and finish off uh, those decades. So here's another one from the 50s. This is the 1958 top 10. But as with the others, I'd like to start off with a few notable uh, absentees. Uh, commendable movies, it has to be said, but didn't quite get, get into that top 10. I'm going to start off with uh, Some Came Running, uh, directed by Vincent Minnelli, uh, starring Frank Sinatra, Shirley MacLaine and Dean Martin. Uh, Frank Sinatra is the star of this show. Uh, he's a fa fascinating character, a lonely and sceptical army corporal who returns to his hometown in Indiana a few years after World War II. Uh, it's not quite clear why it's taken him so long to get home. Uh, perhaps apprehension uh, as we see how the uh, movie uh, sort of uh, takes uh, place. Um, Anyway, character, he tries to restart his life uh, and uh, he, on what route he picked up uh, McLean uh, and she's along with him in the bus and she becomes quite an integral part of the plot. Uh, but he's not ready for uh, uh, getting involved with her. Uh, but he's got a, a troublesome relationship with his brother who resides in the town uh, and he's quite a creative writer and he finds a new found friendship uh uh poker player dean martin and basically we see these uh three characters plus plus a woman who's helping him uh with his uh writing talents plus the brother they all sort of mesh together in a quite an intriguing story um which is well worth watching uh a notable absentee separate tables Directed by Delbert Mann, starring uh, uh, a very full cast, ensemble cast of Burt Lancaster, David Niven, Deborah Carr, Rita Hayworth. Uh, and uh, it's set, it's a beautifully acted drama set in an English B&B, &B, B &B, bread and breakfast um, hotel, uh, separate tables for dinner and... Uh, as a, a small item of news in the local paper that affects the lives of the residents. A number of them uh, live there on a semi-permanent basis. We have an alcoholic writer, uh, Lancaster, the faded star, uh, Hayworth, and uh, the bluff major, played by Niven, uh, the dominating, domineering mother and her daughter, uh, and her daughter's chronically timid, and it's a real melting pot of characters, uh, and we witness uh, their day-to-day goings on and how they sort of interact together. It's quite an intriguing watch, uh, and uh, I do believe Mivan got uh, a, an award, uh, but I haven't got that to hand at the moment. Mon Oncle is a foreign language film uh, directed by Jack Tati, starring Jack. Uh, and it's a comedy, of course. It places his character, which was in a lot of his movies, Monsieur Hulot, in a gimmicky 1950s society of garish materialism. It's comical and Chaplin inspired with long periods of silence. So, um, you know, don't expect too much dialogue here. Uh, Hulot's a, a very much a lost soul, unemployed, bemused and confused by the modern world. Much of the movie sees Holo with his nephew aiding uh, his sister uh, by taking care of the nephew. Uh, and uh, he lives with his uh, sister and her husband. Uh, in a, it's a rather bourgeois, a pretentious sort of place uh, in contrast to Hulo's uh, residence which is very dilapidated. It's quite an amusing film, even though the, you have to, of course, read the subtitles. I saw, uh, probably about 18 months ago, I covered this year in depth, Run Silent, Run Deep. Uh, Robert Wise is the director here. It stars Clark Gable, Burt Lancaster and Jack Warden. We're in a US submarine in World War II, and it's trying to chase down a Japanese destroyer. Uh, there's uh, a, quite a, a deal of dispute 
uh, under the water between the two lead characters as to the tactics. Gable's a little bit obsessive. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the second in charge, uh, Lancaster, struggles really uh, to uh, cope with his subordination. So it's, it's quite a good movie. I suggest you go and uh, have a look at it. And the last one before we get on to the top ten, The Old Man and the Sea, uh, John Sturgis directing. This is basically a solo project for one Spencer Tracy. There is a, a young boy who befriends Tracy. He lives in this fishing t uh, village. He's clearly retired and living out the rest of his days and getting a great deal about a, 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 a pleasure going out on his own in his boat and catch uh, to catch fish. And we witness uh, uh, an event over almost uh, two days where he tackles a marlin uh, and is trying to uh, uh, reel it in, so to speak. It's a, a very intriguing little film, uh, as long as you are into character, because, of course, uh, that plays out throughout uh, as um, the uh, character played by Tracy um, delivers on this notion that he's never going to give up. Um, so it's quite a quite a good film. To the top 10 then. Uh, at 10, it's Touch of Evil, uh, directed by Orson Welles. Uh, this was effectively the, the follow-up to Citizen Kane, although there was a, a long uh, period of time between drinks. Orson Welles stars in this one. He's the lead character alongside Janet Lee and Charlton Heston. We're on the Mexican-US border, and uh, early on we witness a, a bomb uh, going off and destroying a car, uh, and the two law enforcements from either side of the border come together. Um, Wells is, uh, of course, on the US side, and Heston is uh, a Mexican cop. Quite a good uh, Mexican accent, it, it has to be said. It's a very murky tale, uh, and we follow how, how the corruption sort of uh, develops uh, in Wells' sort of investigation. He's uh, heavily into the organised crime uh, in the area, uh, who obviously uh, pay him tea money. And uh, this little event has rather upset the apple cart, and he tries relentlessly to try and uh, maintain that uh, corrupt image. But uh, ironically, uh, Heston is uh, very much uh, a, a law-abiding uh, cop, and he starts to put some spanners in the works. Uh, his wife, uh, Heston's that is, Janet Lee, is also uh, very good in this, and it's how that triangle sort of uh, maps out. Quite a good movie. It's Long Hot Summer. This is directed by Martin Ripp, and it stars Paul Newman, and uh, Joanna Woodward. It's uh, set in a sultry southern atmosphere. It's a bit of a talky, uh, the screenplay. Uh, Kit, uh, sorry, Ritz, comeback really movie after years in the wilderness following accusations of communist sympathising. The script is about the conflicts of the Varna family after Drifter, Ben uh, Quick, played by Newman, arrives in their small Mississippi town. Will Varner, who's played by Orson Welles, is the patriarch, uh, and the issue of his son's suitability to carry on with the family business is an issue that he's considering. And uh, at, after Ben arrives and starts to work uh, for uh, uh, Welles, this opens up on alternatives to him, and also alongside this is uh, Werner's desire for his uh, daughter to become uh, a wife and bear children. And so uh, the very handsome young uh, Ben is also in, in line for that as a possible uh, future happening. And so it's, a, a, it's got quite a bit of uh, uh, relationship development uh, between uh, the 
husband and wife team in real life, uh, Woodward and Newman. And it's a pretty good movie, as is the case with virtually all uh, Paul Newman movies. So I've got it at number nine. It's called The Long Hot Summer. It's Vertigo, Alfred Hitchcock, starring James Stewart and Kim Novak. Uh, brief, brief synopsis on this. Uh, Stewart's a retired cop. He's been forced to retire after suffering vertigo on a roof whilst chasing a subject. Uh, and that subject actually f falls to his death. It has a traumatising effect on uh, Stuart, and he, so he retires uh, on ill health. Uh, he then starts to become uh, involved in private detective work, and he's asked to track a married woman uh, by a wealthy sort, who uh, the husband suspects, suspects her of maybe having a, a lover, and this trail heads down an intense, dramatic uh, uh, set of circumstances which uh, feeds on uh, Stuart's obsession about uh, the woman, which grows as the story unfolds. It's, a, it's an intriguing movie, um, certainly one of Hitchcock's best, and many people consider it to be his best. But I've only got it at number eight, uh, uh, but it's got a, a very uh, intricate storyline and I'm not going to uh, plot spoil here. Strange, really, but uh, psychologically very deep. So that's Vertigo at number eight. Seven, uh, The Quiet American, uh, directed by Joseph Mankovich. It stars Michael Redgrave, Audie Murphy and Giorgio Moll. Uh, the third on that list is uh, a Vietnamese girl. She uh, she plays Fong, which is not actually Vietnamese, but she her character is a Vietnamese girl called Fong. It's set in Saigon in 1952 during the Indo-China War. Uh, the French colonialists are battering uh, the uh, left-wing communists. Hmm, there's a surprise. Ho Chi Minh. Uh, this was prior to the American involvement in the Vietnam situation. Redgrave's a British journalist uh, correspondent and he's covering the war and the pol political uh, uh, ramifications from that. As I say, he lives with this Fong and has done for many years, although there is a, a large uh, age difference. Uh, she's a very attractive Vietnamese. And then the uh, situation changes when uh, an American economist, Murphy, uh, working for an international aid organisation, uh, arrives and gets uh, caught between the communists and the colonialists as he tries to uh, win hearts and minds uh, of the Vietnamese people. Uh, and in the, the process of uh, carrying out those sort of uh, relationships, he also gets involved with Fong and effectively uh, snatches her away uh, from uh, the journalist. Uh, the journalist, played by Redway, excellent uh, uh, portrayal by Redway, decides that he's not going to let, let lie down to this, and he starts spreading the word that the American is actually working for the CIA, selling gu guns and arms to uh, the anti-communist faction. It's a good movie. Of course, it was redone a few decades later with Michael Caine in the lead role. But this version is as good in black and white, of course. Cold in Alex is at number six. J. Lee Thompson's the director. It stars uh, John Mills, Anthony Quayle and Sylvia Sims. It's a very exciting and inspirational war uh, movie. Well, that's how I saw it. it. Tells the story of a crew of a military ambulance in North Africa, desperately trying to make it to the safety of Alexandra and being pursued by the German uh, army uh, under Rommel. There are scenes of drama, comedy and unbearable tension and it's all set, set against the authentic backdrop of the North African desert during World War II. Tremendous performances by all uh, and uh, it's quite gripping. There we are, Heist Cold in Alex. I've, I did this uh, movie uh, as a full review recently. It's The Young Lions. 
It was nominated for a BAFTA Best Film, uh, but didn't get anywhere with the uh, Oscars. It's um, directed by Edward Dinkrick, and it stars Marlon Brando, uh, Montgomery Cliff, and Dean Martin, and a Maximilian Schell. Uh, three young soldiers in World War, World War II, one German, two uh, Americans. Brando, of course, is the German. He's Le Lieutenant Christian. Uh, then we've got uh, Cliff. He's a Jewish uh, 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 man, Noah Ackerman. And Whiteacre is the third character, played by Dean Martin. And he's a show business uh, celebrity. And he uh, uh, shows early on that he's a bit of a coward and uh, hides behind his fame to avoid uh, being posted overseas. Although latterly he has little choice and he, he does then uh, go overseas. Uh, the three paths of the three men eventually come together uh, late on in the film. And we see basically uh, the three of their lives uh, map out throughout the war. And it, it tackles uh, the subjects, particularly their relationship with women, uh, the notion of war and the impact that has on them uh, and uh, how they survive, uh, of course. And uh, the t integrity that they bring to uh, the duties that they have to carry out. And uh, there's uh, quite a vivid pictures of the harsh realities of war. We later in the piece see um, the Americans uh, arrive at a concentration camp, which uh, is, is pretty much in your face. Um, uh, prejudice and bigotry are covered uh, uh, throughout. And great performances, I felt, by the three leads. And I was absolutely enthralled by this. Maximilian Schell plays a German captain, a, the superior to uh, Brando. And uh, Brando is involved in uh, uh, an activity that he's ordered to do by the captain in visiting the captain's uh, wife in Berlin. And that's a, a very sort of eye-opening uh, visit. In fact, two visits. Great movie, I think. Look Back in Anger. Uh, this is a, a, a movie directed by Tony Richardson. It stars uh, 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 Claire Boone, Mary Ewer, and Richard Burton. And uh, it's uh, a John Osborne play. And the principal account character in this uh, is it's an account of a a very angry young man, played by Burton, who can't quite cope with the problems of a tough environment, even though he's, I uh, uh, wouldn't say he was affluent, but he's certainly not poor, uh, and he vents his immature venom uh, with a frenzy of nasty words, uh, specifically to the two women who let him uh, run all over them, his wife and his mistress. Uh, this, they seem to be very gullible creatures, uh, great performance by um, Burton uh, and uh, a pretty strong performances by the two women as well. Uh, it's a, a, a very good movie, uh, very stark and, and near the sort of uh, bone, really, in terms of the emotions that you see uh, coming out. Look back in anger, and it's my number four. Three on my top ten list. This is I Want to Live, uh, and uh, this movie... Uh, is directed by Robert Wise and Susan Hayward is the lead character. She plays Barbara Graham. It's based on a, a real life story, uh, a life event. It's a hard eating biopic really about the West Coast small time crook drug addict and prostitute Barbara Graham. And uh, her writings were instrumental in uh, moving towards a script. Hayward... Uh, She's a bit of a good time party go girl uh, for the underworld uh, and she gets caught up in a crime which leads to murder and then uh, we follow her through the legal processes. Eventually she is sent to the gas chamber uh, in the mid-50s uh, and 
it's a pretty uh, intense and uh, dramatic film. Uh, the evidence suggests that she probably didn't do it, but her, her alibi, her, uh, her husband, disappears when the uh, authorities want to uh, interview him. Uh, and she's framed, really, by the two acquaintances uh, who uh, were around at the time. There's graphic scenes of the last hours of her life before uh, being delivered to the gas chamber, which is also very vivid. She actually did die in San Quentin prison in June 1955. And she, uh, for this performance, Su Susan Hayward won the Best Actress Oscar. Uh, and it's a telling indictment, really, of the justice system and capital punishment. Uh, not for the faint-hearted. Brilliant film, though. It's my number three, I Want to Live. Films this year at number two, The Defiant Ones. This is directed by Stanley Kramer and stars in the lead roles, Sidney Poitier and Tony Curtis. There's a supporting role for Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, this is an early race relations type drama by liberal filmmaker Stanley Kramer. Uh, two convicts escape when the Changan vehicle transporting them crashes in a storm. The problem is that they are handcuffed together. Uh, we follow their determination to stay free with the authorities with sniffer dogs in hot pursuit. <coughs> it's a gripping drama and touches on many points that relates to race and racism. They experience all kinds of physical hardships navigating that course, and they are captured by a lynch mob, escape, and later sheltered by a young woman, a young mother who's a widow, uh, who desires male companionship. Curtis and Potier both received Oscar nominations for this uh, performance, and it is absolutely brilliant. Um, I really do suggest that you get to see this one. Um, they're both at the top of their game, the defiant ones. And then Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Richard Brooks is the director here. It's based on a Tennessee Williams play and it stars Paul Newman, Elizabeth Taylor, Burt Ives. And it's uh, a tale of the Oscar family uh, about a disintegrating marriage revolving around Newman not wanting sex with his wife Taylor, uh, the gossip over no children, manhood, southern beliefs, secrets, and the role of the patriarch, Big Dally, played by Burl Ives. Uh, and uh, he recently has had a cancer diagnosis. Uh, so right at the top of the uh, plot, really, is uh, who's going to get what when he passes. And this becomes quite... a uh, uh, a well-trodden path throughout the script. It smoulders, it's very heated, and the acting's five-star. Um, this movie uh, received six Oscar nominations. Didn't actually win for anything, but was nominated for Best Picture, Best Actor. Uh, uh, that was the first nomination uh, that uh, Newman had received. Uh, Best Actress, Elizabeth Taker, that's her second. Uh, uh, of four consecutive nominations uh, and Best Director for Brooks. Um, also, it got a nomination for Best uh, Adapted Screenplay and Cinematography. Okay, uh, so it was uh, certainly a very popular me mo movie uh, and I actually loved it. And uh, I'm going to include on the end of this uh, just a snippet of the script involving the two characters, Newman and uh, Taylor. Uh, Taylor's uh, character was Maggie and uh, Newman is called Brick. And I'll put a little bit up there. I'm not going to read it because I can't do a female accent. But it'll give you some sort of gist of the quality of the script and the quality, of course, of the acting. So that's my lot. That's my top 10 for 1958. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments though, please, in case I've missed uh, a very important movie from that year.